Good morning. Uh, so there was a miscommunication on the title of this talk, which I wanted to call out. It's an important distinction. Uh, the actual title is Tools of Creation, Reorienting Humanity's Identity and Aspirations. And I wanted to make the distinction because, uh, one, I don't think that uh, one needs to be a problem, sol uh, problem snob, that everyone can make meaningful, meaningful contributions to humanity. And that's what I want to talk about today, is how we can do that. In a way, you know, we have three phenomena that we are manipulating. It's matter, life, and mind, right? What would you end up creating when you have mastered all three domains? The most amazing discovery of our generation is that we can program anything. Code is the new language of creation. And this is happening right now in neuroscience, genomics, and synthetic biology. We are decoding the languages of biology into zeros and ones, and life itself is becoming programmable. Yeah. So the most stunning and consequential development of our time is that we are building tools to literally program our existence. We can use synthetic biology to program organisms to grow objects. We're using genomics to increasingly power our ability to rewrite our bodies. And we're using AI to create new forms of intelligence. I oftentimes think of da Vinci and his sketchbooks, where he could draw out a flying machine but the difference between him and us is whereas he could sketch, today we can build. And that's what makes our time and place in the arc of humanity so unique, is that we can literally author our lives and the world around us with our tools of creation, something that no preceding generation could ever do. So in a famous quote often attributed to Marshall McLuhan, we shape our tools and then our tools shape us. I want to talk about why our emerging tools of creation are so unique and why they give us enormous powers of creation. I like to call them tools that work at the operating system level, tools that once they get into the hands of enough creative builders have the power to rewrite major operating systems of our society. So what do I mean by an operating system? Just like a computer has an operating system at its core that determines how it works and determines how applications work on top, Everything in life has an operating system. And throughout history, the biggest changes in our society have worked at this OS layer. So before I dive into these tools, I would like to make a personal note. Um, like many of you in this room, I'm an entrepreneur. And I had a, an ordinary childhood. But I was raised within a belief system that taught me that the world was fixed, that it was predestined along a certain evolutionary path. And I was taught that my responsibility was to obey the rules not become the creator of those rules. Once I figured out this existence, our existence is programmable, it had a transformational experience in my life. It redefined my identity, my aspirations, and my very reason for existence. As I've matured in my understanding of these tools, two things came to mind. One is how limited my thinking was prior to this discovery. And two is the enormous powers of, that we now have both today and tomorrow. So let's look at a few historical tools of creation to give context on what these tools do within our society. Let's start with language, one of the oldest tools. Language was one of the first things that allowed humans to cooperate and share knowledge. As Scott Phoenix of Vicarious, an AI company, said, before language, if someone figured out how to bang rocks together and make a tool, that information would have remained locked forever in that person. Lacking an ability to communicate it, people would have continued to rediscover it, stalling progress. Over time, the tool of language has enabled people to create even more tools. But there was a big shift in the tool of, of language when the printing press arrived in Europe. Although we had had movable type for block printing in China, Johannes Gutenberg did one very simple thing. He used it for letters of a phonetic alphabet. This really simple act of making hand molds for letters, he was able to spark an idea revolution. Now books and knowledge were available to a broad array of people, not just elite scribes. So fast forward to the 21st century, and it goes without saying that the internet now allows us to both produce and consume enormous amounts of information, more than we've ever had before. But what does the future of information look like, of language? Uh, Scott Phoenix, again, a friend of mine, offered the following exercise, thought exercise. What if, in the future, in a matter of seconds, if we could basically think years worth of thoughts in that one second, how would that change our problem-solving abilities? How would it change our creative powers? 
how would it influence our interpersonal relationships? Here's a second example of a, a tool of creation that had enormous impact on our society. Joseph Lister, a 19th century surgeon, used Louis Pasteur's findings of microbiology to discover what really caused infection. So before he created the antiseptic surgery tools, they thought that, that infection came from bad air. So they didn't wash their hands, they didn't sterilize their equipment. But once they figured out that it came from tiny microorg microorganisms and they could sterilize, we dramatically increased lifespan from mid-40s to the mid-70s. What would be the next big change in lifespan? Could it be the power of genomics? Scientists like Craig Venter are using the, the, per, the genome for personalized medicine, shifting how we think about disease and health from one of recognizing disease to presenting disease and even aging from happening, or tools, gene editing tools like CRISPR. These tools of creation, again, once they get into the hands of enough individuals, create an explosion of change within our society. Now, not only do our, our tools have amazing powers of creation today, more so than any, any other time in our history, but they're amplified by this new collaboration and production platform we have on the internet. Now millions of people can literally get online and produce. So a teenager in her basement can, can create a new species using uh, genetic code, again, using tools freely available on the internet. But this unique time in history, with our incredibly powerful tools of creation, never before has our society demanded more thoughtful and future literate entrepreneurs. Future literacy is a, is a characteristic I see in nearly all the entrepreneurs I work with and invest in. And the definition I like to I use for that is people who create mental models for the emerging future by living experimentally and adventurously. I would close with this thought in a video clip. If we are to build a thriving humanity, we need to roll up our sleeves with tools of creation in hand and get to work because the future will not write itself. I sometimes wonder if science would be better explained as like uh, an adventure movie, you know? You don't hear about the drama and the difficulty and the turmoil and, you know, it's an adventure story. And I feel that the way that we, we teach science, especially the kids, misses all of that. If I would have told my 12-year-old self or my 18-year-old self uh, what I would have been doing the next 10 or 15 years, I would have blew my own mind. There are a whole bunch of things that I can't even imagine today, but that I think will be possible if we can actually tame the engineering of biology. It, it sounds sort of odd, but what, what I'm actually most excited about is the stuff that I can't even dream of today. <laughs> Having heroes be people who have made technologies that have created great shifts in the world is a really useful property for society to have. What's important to realize is that there are no superhumans. You actually can do anything. You just have to set out to do it. Now, the question is this. What kind of world are you going to help build? Thank you.